So today we're going to be talking about how Tucker Carlson interviewed Vladimir Putin. Ooh. Tucker Carlson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you started up. All right. All right. We're going to talk about Tucker Carlson first and foremost, because he just did a crazy interview with Vladimir Putin and Neil's got some hot takes. Forget the interview. I'm not saying it's bad or good, but he streamed it on X. It had 179 million views in a matter of days. And you said live, live stream? Yes. Okay. He live streamed it on X. Yeah. That's what he, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Or that's at least I didn't watch it live. Yeah. But that's what it or technically it wasn't live. He yeah. streamed it on yeah. X. He interviewed it beforehand yeah. in Russia. But at a specific time, I think it was like 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. Pacific Standard yeah. Time. He was like, we're going to release it. And he ended up releasing it on X. But just on X alone, it got 179 million views. And you didn't watch the X version. You watched the AI version, I watched right? the No, I watched the YouTube version with a translation. But then I saw a clip of the AI version. And the AI version had more emotions. It's um, So it basically took Putin's voice and then it lip synced it. So the lips, like you can tell it's kind of like a machine, like, you know, lips. But it's it's it has his emotions and it has his voice. So it flows a little better. Oh, cool. I'm going to yeah. check that one out. The same thing with the Argentina president. Remember the World Economic yeah. Forum? Yeah, same deal. And overall, you know, I don't know. Have you watched the whole thing or you just watched? Only one hour. I'm going to go home and watch the rest after I get my food. Yeah, it was definitely interesting. I know you and I, neither of us really care to get political, but... Not was, on this podcast. Yes. <laughs> you, know, I got, you know, I got called out for that in, in the comments. Someone was like, Neil's the more level-headed one. Um, Eric's talking about, you know, um, uh, Trump's marketing and Elon's marketing. I'm like, dude, it's I'm just talking about their marketing. It's not like I'm, I'm like saying anything good or bad about them. So. Yeah, and what I saw from it is like, if you look at Tucker, he was a Fox News, what, what do they call him? Not he was content, like a number uh, one news like anchor. Anchor, anchor. Yeah, yeah, he was a like news anchor. Man. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Like Ron Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was an anchor man. Ron Jeremy's the porn star. Ron Jeremy? <laughs> Is it? Yeah. What's the guy's yeah. name? Ron R what? Ron, Ron Burgundy. Ron Burgundy. <laughs> All right. So did, um, on a side note, didn't Ron Jeremy try to run for president or something like that? I don't think so. It was something like that. He made the news. Congressman, senator back in the day. Yeah. Either way. So he's an anchor man and he got fired from Fox because mm -hmm. I think there were some disagreements on what he was talking about versus yes. some of the advertisers. Yes. And then on the flip side, when... He ended up uh, going out on his own. People offered him a lot of money to join up, like the guy he yeah. created. Valuetainment. Uh, yeah, Valuetainment. A $100 million contract, and it, he put it on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what he ended up doing is he decided to just go out on his own, and he created his own network called the TCN or something like that. Yeah, Tucker Carlson Network. Yeah. 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 Uh, and he streamed this on yeah. his own website. Yeah. I watched it on his website and not on X. Wow, Why? Because when I was watching on X, I kept getting uh, media errors. Interesting. Like saying like, oh, uh, media player error. Yeah. And then- Why don't you just go to YouTube? That's where I watched it. Uh, I, then I just went to his website. Okay. I didn't know if it was going to be on YouTube or yeah. not. Because yeah. it made it seem like it was only going to be on the X. The YouTube, by the way, it grew really fast. When I started watching it, it was like uh, 500,000 views. And then when I checked again a couple hours later, it's like four, th four hours later, it was like 9 million views. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, but it streamed better on his website than X because I think yeah. too many people are trying to stream it and the quality was just so low yep. and I have good internet. Yep. So I was like, screw this. I, I went to, um, what is it called? I went to his website. Yeah. I saw it. And he also has paid plans. Yeah. I don't subscribe to I know that. his paid plans or yeah. anything like that. But I said, I'm like, dude, this guy probably racked in millions of dollars in ads. No, in revenue, he doesn't yeah. have ads. He has a subscription. Like if you want- Oh, him, revenue interview, to, to watch the- Yeah, I wonder how he made money on that one. No, it's free. But if you go to his own website, yeah. he has other interviews and he talks about stuff like the borders or whatever it may yeah. be. And he charges for a lot of his content. So how many people saw that interview and they're like, oh, we want all these other exclusive interviews and subscribe. I bet yeah. you he generated more than a million dollars in revenue, way more than that, I bet. He runs within, Google ads for his own name. <laughs> uh, I would too. Yeah. Um, but I, I bet you he generated millions of dollars in revenue. His offer is not day. bad on his site. So to your point, so if you go to tuckercarlson.com for $6 a month, billed annually, uh, you get access to five brand new shows, speeches, films, and more, investigative reports and short documentaries, behind the scenes look, which I would want to see behind the scenes with Putin, right? Um, he's doing one with Snowden too. That's going to be coming out um, as well. And his personal inbox to ask him anything you want. So uh, for nine bucks a month or six bucks a month, that's pretty good. And I, I think a lot of people would pay for annual. 
I don't know how he's going to manage the inbox because my inbox is bad and he has a way bigger yeah. brand than I do. No clue. Like 100x. It has to be whatever. like a Reddit voting thing. To whatever gets the most questions get answered. Who knows? We'll have to subscribe. You can subscribe. I'll use your account. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to spend six dollars. But I, I think there's there's Im- other implications here too because you know Candace Owens, you know who she is. Yes. So she's got her own network too, and there basically a lot of people are leaving legacy uh, news networks and they're building their own media companies. And Patrick Brett David from Value Entertainment has said this election cycle is going to be the last time that media has all the power. They think he thinks that the power is shifting over to like new media, like podcasts, for example. I don't know if that's going to happen in the next four years, but I, I think we're seeing it slide in that direction. Well, well, speaking of media, have you noticed that what a lot of the new sites end up publishing, and I think they're all responsible for it. It doesn't matter what way they lean politically. A lot of what they just put out isn't always the reality. I, I think what media does in many cases, uh, in many countries, is they paint their own narrative. They distort it. Yeah. Yes, they and distort you, you it. You have to. I, I mean, just like this this Putin interview, like you have to control the narrative. I'm actually listening to this podcast where it talks about Napoleon, the guy that, the conqueror, right? And his whole thing is you have to control the message. You have to control the narrative. You have to over communicate. And like he did get to the point where he was like censoring like the, the books that were released, right? Because he was c- controlling information flow. And then while I'm listening, to, I looked at the history of, of, of Nazi Germany. Same thing too. It's like they control the narrative. That's how like they, it's the same thing for every single country. Like we have our own propaganda too. So yeah, but what's funny is, is if you look at the Putin interview, there's no way he was able to just talk about whatever free. Like for sure, you know, if I had to put money on it, I'm not yeah. a betting man. But if I was, I bet you Russia ended up controlling the interview and the narrative. What was released to Russia, like Russian citizens? No, no, I'm talking about in the Tucker Carlson interview. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you can tell he was trying yeah, to control of it. Of course, yeah. yeah. He would just be like, just be patient, thirty seconds, yeah. and I just want to give you some context. I'm like, yeah. okay, this went on for five, ten minutes. I kind of appreciated that he did. I mean, it was kind of annoying, but yes. it's like it was important because nobody really knows the history from like his his mouth. You know what I mean? Yeah, no yeah. one knows it. But yes, you know. I, I think in marketing, just in general, everyone is controlling the narrative, whether yep. we like it or not. Yep. And companies do the same thing too. A, a prime example of this is if a company has bad reviews, they want to control the narrative and show great reviews, right? Yep. We're all in essence guilty of it to some extent. Yeah. So 179 million views on just X alone, probably tens of millions of views on, on other channels as well. And so I think he's just going to continue down this path. I think we could probably get to the point where he'll interview Xi Jinping as well. And I think it's helpful to listen to perspectives from, from everyone. And Lex Friedman wants to do the same thing. He wants to talk to Putin too. I think it's wrong for media to say, oh, uh, Tucker Carlson's a mouthpiece for Russia. He shouldn't be talking. I think it's let everyone listen to the narrative from, from everyone. Let everyone make their own decision. And people don't like that. Yeah, it's, dude, I'm looking up right now. His YouTube interview, I can't actually see the one that you're talking about with the millions of views. The YouTube one? Uh, I see 11 million views one day ago. Yeah. That's, this thing must have globally, because you have to remember, right? We are English speaking. There's so many other people that speak other languages like Spanish, Portuguese, yep. French, etc. It must have been translated. I bet you this thing globally has over a billion views. Whoever took the AI and translated it into their native languages, like this is just one of those, that's an arbitrage. If you want to like suck onto the, like, you know, uh, like, like leech off the views, it'd be, be a parasite. Yes. You get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But- Getting views is great if you can't convert them into customers. Does it really matter at the end of the day? It doesn't, unless you're selling ads and you're trying to arbitrage that. That's true. But like even you and I, right? We have ads on our podcast. If we have business advertisers on our podcast and then we have a Vladimir put an interview on our podcast, I get we're going to get tons of impressions. So theory will make more money from ad dollars. But the business advertisers are going to be disappointed because it's not going to convert well. It's just people are going to listen to ad and not spend any money. By the way, Neil and I have an agency owners group called the Agency Owners Association. All you have to do, just go to marketingschool.io slash agency. Once again, it's marketingschool.io slash agency to learn more. And now back to the show. Dude, you know, by the time you guys listen to this, it'll be past the day, but tomorrow is the Super Bowl. Did you know that a company spends on average over $230,000 per second on a commercial? Isn't it, uh, isn't each commercial like six million bucks now? Three million bucks? Okay, six million. Seven million bucks now. Seven million. Yeah, but what most people don't tell you is you got to spend seven million dollars and then they typically make you buy airtime for things like the Olympics or other events Uh and they want you to buy the same amount. So if you spend, because you have to remember when you're watching a Super Bowl, there's prime spots for Super Bowl ads and there's non-prime spots. Yeah. 
if you want good spots, they typically want you to buy more ads for other backend stuff. I've seen it in many cases, you have to buy like 18 million more on the backend. Wow, so it's it becomes like a $25 million contract. Plus the cost of creative. Yeah. A lot of people pay celebrities and yeah. they hire like the big companies like, like 30 to 35 million. Like you're, you're typically looking at 25 to 35 million. I wonder how Gary V got, remember when Gary V, v did the, when it was crypt, the crypto bowl, like he did like two or three commercials. I wonder. The crypto bowl? Yeah. So there, there's a, I, I think. Wait, what's the crypto bowl? No, this was like maybe three years ago or so, two years ago. Like FTX had a commercial, Coinbase had a commercial. A lot of people had like, a lot of the exchanges had commercials. Remember oh, that? Oh, crypto bowl. I thought you said crypto bowl. Like oh, a yeah. Super Bowl, yeah, yeah. B -O -W. They called the Crypto Bowl for that one. They they kind of named it that because they knew a lot of exchanges were going to be advertising, right? And so I'm curious, like you know, if how much do you think these people are getting paid per per creative? Like a million bucks, five million bucks or so? Because I know Gary V did a couple. Like one was with J Lo. One was he had a couple celebs and all are, that. Are you talking about the cost, including the celebs, or not including the celebs? I already with know. With and without. With and without. Uh, so the, the cost for film crew and all that kind of stuff, you're looking at somewhere between, call it one to $2 million. The rest of the money, like if, if you're spending seven, eight million, the yep. rest of the money is spent on the celeb talent. Yep. Assuming you're getting big celebrities. Dude. I um I think we can wrap this one up with what because we, we we talked about media so much. I have this this tweet over here open from Austin Reef, one of the co-founders of Morning Brew. So he's a CEO CEO now, but um so you see in this tweet, TechCrunch is shuttering its subscription service, TC Plus, as it pushes to reorient its coverage around investors amid layoffs. Washington Post has lost roughly 500,000 subscribers since its Trump era peak, is considering more dynamically priced subscriptions. Time fully removed its digital paywall. Quartz dropped its paywall. The Atlantic shifted from a blanket paywall to more dynamic, uh, more dynamic approach. And then um, Gannett, which one of the, which is the U.S. largest local newspaper company, began reducing the number of articles behind its paywall. So um, this guy's tweet, the original tweeter, news sites pull back from su subscription model is eye watering. And then Austin said this. He said, "The problem in media isn't the business model. The problem is that most of the content sucks." Now, when you look at Tucker's Car Tucker Carlson's content, it's like that's good content. Yeah, that's why it works. Yes, and I yeah. now understand why he didn't want to take a $100 million deal because he probably made more than, because it's only, what, 20 a year or something like that? Yep. He'll make more than $20 million in revenue yep. just from the- and, and he was comfortable. It takes a lot of guts to be fired and say, be offered like 100 here, but like yeah. to know that in the long term, betting on yourself, you know, you're, you're like, you already know you're a monster. Yeah. You know you're worth a lot more. Yes. Yeah, so- I find that interesting. So anyway, that is for, that's it for today's episode. Please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe. And uh, oh, also go to marketingschool.io slash agency because we have that application now open for our agency owners program, Agency Owners Association. And we'll see you tomorrow.